الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله all of us are in a great need and haja of our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala we're all in need and it is something by necessity and it is a part of our al-abudiyya it's a part of our worship and our submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so meaning it's an act of ibadah it's an act of worship to actually need and implore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to assist you in difficulty and from amongst the dua amongst the ways is to supplicate to Allah in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and from amongst the prophetic dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam that we studied prior is the dua which all of us should memorize and that is saying and supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ya Hayu Ya Qayyum Bi Rahmatika Astaghith Astaghith Aslah li shani kulli Wala takilni ila nafsi tarfat al ain. So in this supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the mu'min, the believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his divine names and attributes that he is al hay and he is al qayyum he's the ever living and he uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala is in charge of all affairs and he is not in need of anyone but everything in creation needs him subhanahu wa ta'ala so we're supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, actualizing Tawheed, Tawheed al ibadah and supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by His divine names and attributes, and recognizing and acknowledging His Lordship, His Rububiyyah. So Tawheed and all of its categories are manifested there in that dua. And so... The supplicant is saying, Ya Hayul Ya Qayyum, Bi Rahmatika Astaghith, by your mercy, I, uh, I seek refuge in you. Bi Rahmatika Astaghith, Aslah Lishani Kulli, rectify all of my affairs. And do not leave me in charge of my own affairs, even for the blink of an, blinking of an eye. So you see that this supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the supplicant, the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, humbling his or herself to Allah, Supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and actualizing Tawheed, Tawheed al ibadah the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal alone. Supplicating by His divine names and attributes and, and acknowledging His Lordship subhanahu wa ta'ala. And supplicating to Him by His divine names and attributes as well as, as, well as the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it would not be permissible to supplicate to anything other than, or anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything or anyone other than Allah Azza wa Jal. So it shows us that mercy is from the divine characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bi rahmatin astaghith. By by your mercy, I seek refuge. 
I seek refuge in your mercy. It would not be permissible if it was something that was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but rather it is his mercy, it is one of his divine attributes that shows it that it's permissible, uh, not that it's just permissible, but his divine uh, attributes and names are that which we can supplicate to him subhanahu wa ta'ala by. Bi rahmatika astaghayth aslah lishani kulli Please, Ya Rabbi, so here the supplicant is leaving all of their affairs with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> and this is uh, uh, actually a part of tawakkul as well. Because they're making itimad al Allah. They are leaving all of their affairs and relying solely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we mentioned countless times as some of the ulama define tawakkul, who itimad al Allah wa fi'l asbab, that it is relying uh, completely in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Putting your affairs with Allah asbab, and making effort. So if you want to have your wealth increase, you got to make effort to Allah and supplicate. Supplicate with this dua. If you want to get married, you've got to make effort. you got to strive. you got to put your name out there. you got to go forward. you got to have the means if you're a man, the finances. you got to strive and then put your trust solely with Allah and you're begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to rectify all of your affairs and leaving all of your affairs. Rectify all of my affairs because I can't do it. That's what the servant is saying. That's what he or she is saying. They're begging Allah, leaving their affairs with him to wa ta'ala. Don't leave me in charge of my own affairs, even for the, the blinking of an eye, because why? The servant is actualizing Tawheed and realizing that they're so weak, and we're so fragile, and we're so sinful. We do an act of khair, and we do 20 acts of shar, negating that khair. And because istighatha is a type of ibadah, it's a type of uh, ibadah, we need to know what it means. What does it mean, istighatha? So that's why I decided to take this time out to look further for myself so I have better knowledge of what I'm supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for and with. What does it mean, this dua? Ya hayyul ya qayyum. What does it mean? Uh, so the scholars, they mention as a linguistic term, it comes from the word which means to hope for, uh, hope for assistance during a time of need. To hope for assistance during a time of need. This is the linguistic term of uh, istighatha. So it's actually the talab. When we have the verb in Arabic, when we have like isti'ana, istighatha, istighfar, all of this, when we have that alif, sin, and the ta, and, and the ta before the uh, added to the verb, to the root form of the verb, then this shows this is a, a talab. This shows that this is, so it changes the meaning to where it is in the form of where it's a, a, uh, a talab, like a request, like supplication, like dua. So, as a term which is very similar in the, as an istilah uh, shari, uh, as a sharia based uh, terminology, the meaning is very similar. Let's just look at two uh, definitions. Qala Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah about this term uh, istighatha. He says, al-istighatha talab al-ghawth wa huwa li-izala tishidda. So it's very similar to the linguistic meaning. So he says al-istighatha, it is to seek uh, al you know, to seek, uh, basically to seek assistance. 
and it is seeking assistance by removing a difficulty. So, istighatha, for example, the person who is tested with their wealth, if they make istighatha to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a form of ibadah, then they are begging and asking him to Barakatala to assist them and provide for them. So uh, the, the supplicant is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether it's a he or she, to remove the difficulty they face with poverty and to provide for them. So this is al izala al al shidda This is removing the difficulty. And this is istighatha. Istighatha by uh, a talab, by asking and requesting and supplicating and begging your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. That does not mean, and that's why it's very important for us to understand, that uh, when we talk about a lot of these terms uh, that are terms of worship like istighatha, isti'ana, and this is a big thing with a lot of the takfiris, isti'ana ala kuffar, uh, you know, relying on uh, seeking assistance from the disbelievers, okay? And all of these other terms, that these terms, they have a linguistic meaning and they have a sharia-based meaning as a sharia terminology. Also, they have uh, times when they are permissible with the creation and times when it is impermissible with the creation. And that means when it's an act of ibadah. It's impermissible to turn any, to give any ibadah to other than Allah Azza wa Jal. So, when it comes to istighatha, to have to seek from someone to help you remove a difficulty, you can do that. You can actually rem uh, ask someone, can you please help me? I'm having a great, dif di I'm having great difficulty with my homework. I'm having great difficulty with getting a job. Can you assist me with some of your contacts? Can you help me fill out my resume or my CV? Can you help me uh, you know, by loaning me some money? Okay, These are jahiz. jahiz. These are permissible ways of istighatha. To, to ask someone with something they're able to do. You're not asking the dead. If you're asking the dead, well then that would be istighatha. Uh, uh, muharram wa shirkiya. That would be shirk, polytheism, and that would be impermissible because you're asking those who can't help you. And this is where you see the grave worshippers, the kuburiyun, and some of the extreme uh, ahl tasawwuf, which most of the kuburiyun generally they are, are some on some sort of uh, Sufi uh, turk, uh, Sufi path that those extreme ones amongst them, they make istighatha to the dead. And you would not believe that. But when you travel, you'll see this. You'll see written on the sides of some masajid, like in Ethiopia, and I know, I'm sure, also in Egypt, which is a Muslim land, and other places, you'll see, Ya Fulan, Ya so-and-so, O so-and-so, Nastaghaythu uh, Bik. You know, we seek your ho your help because they do this with the saints for example in ethiopia they do this with the grave of najashi that there is some sahabi i believe that are are buried there or they believe that are buried there and where his in the the place i forgot the name of the village where his body is and people make pilgrimage there all the time probably year round they go to visit najashi and they do all kind of shirkiyat and some, you know, they're so proud because he's, uh, you know, from that that nation, and he died as a as a Muslim. You know, the first believer there in Ethiopia, and during the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he was a tabi'i, meaning he met Sahaba رضي الله تعالى مجمعين. and may Allah subhanahu wa taala have mercy upon him and bless him with jannah for those, Amin ya Rabbil alamin. So he was a, one of our salaf. However. It is impermissible to seek istighatha from him or anything or anyone that is unable to help you. So that's when istighatha becomes shirk. That's when it becomes polytheism. So that's the difference between istighatha, istighatha, yani ibadah, 
which is a form of worship in istighatha, uh, you know, that's ibadah, that's mishroor. So istighatha, that's ibadah, it can be of two types. Mishroor wa mimnur. Mishroor means that the permissible type, that of course you make istighatha, which is a type of ibadah, to Allah Azza wa Jal. Oh Allah, please help me to uh, find a job. Please provide for me, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Lift this difficulty from me. The impermissible, the mimnur form of ibadah is the istighatha uh, directing that act of worship to anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, by going to the graves and saying, Ya Abdul Qadir Jilani, Ya Najashi, uh, Ya so and so, La, Ya so and so, please help me. Uh, you know, my wife is barren. I have a sickness, help me, heal me, uh, please increase my risk, please get me, uh, make shifa for me uh, with, uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, any of these kind of things, because I'm having great difficulty, any way in which you are supplicating to the dead and asking them to remove a difficulty from you, then this is istighatha shirkiya istighatha mimnur. It's impermissible. I think that's clear. And we'll just end by the statement of Sheikh Salim bin Fazan, which is very similar to what Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah said. Qala Imam al Fazan wa istighatha talab al ghoth wa la takun illa fi waqt a shidda. So this is how you distinguish this act of ibadah because there's other things like isti'ana. What's the difference between istighatha wa isti'ana and other acts of ibadah? The way we know istighatha, it means, he said, it is to seek, uh, seek, a, uh, seek, um, uh, seek refuge and seek uh, assistance in, and he said it's only during a time of difficulty. So when it's during a time of difficulty, this is considered istighatha. Okay, so that's going to distinguish it from other types of ibadah like isti'ana, uh, you know, and some of the other uh, forms of, of worship. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with ilm al-nafi wa rizqan tayyib wa amal al And may Allah accept all of our du'as and help the Muslims everywhere, bless the Muslims everywhere, forgive the Muslims everywhere, and guide the Muslims everywhere, and provide the Muslims for the Muslims everywhere. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.